Hey there everybody, this is Antonio Wolf trying out the uh, YouTube live feature for the first time. I was wondering if uh, it might be better to just uh, do a live stream uh, and then do a recording and then upload. It might just save me the time and uh, the bandwidth. Uh, anyways, as the uh, stream title goes, Hegel's logic being nothing becoming. Uh, quite a lot of videos uh, are around for that, uh, and uh, most of them are quite trash, honestly. Uh, they don't really do a, a good job of uh, explaining this whole thing, this whole issue. So, what's the logic about? Well, the logic is about the thinking of thinking. And so the way I like to explain it, the way I like to explore it and think about it uh, is precisely in that manner, that this is just about the thinking of thinking. Uh, it's nothing weird, nothing really special, honestly, when you really uh, look at it at its most basic. Uh, but nonetheless, that is that. Uh, and obviously people get tripped up with that beginning, with the whole being is nothing, and nothing is being, uh, and then how the hell do you get to becoming and what does that mean? The basic gist is this, uh, though it's the unspoken presupposition of the logic. Hegel says the science of logic has no presuppositions, uh, but very clearly it does. Uh, the issue is simply that the presupposition is not a conceptual presupposition. We are not going to assume that we know what it is that we're supposed to know. Uh, so in this sense, uh, Hegel's actually quite empirical. Uh, we're going to be empirical about reason, uh, funny enough. But nonetheless, we will find out that reason is not uh, a mere empirical accident, but rather has its own internal necessity. So the science of logic begins with pure immediacy. And uh, what is pure immediacy? Well, you know, Hegel says uh, we can't really, uh, it doesn't make sense to use the term immediate uh, because that's already too telling. It says too much. It brings to mind way too much. It is immediate, not immediate. We already have our first concept if we choose the immediate. Uh, in the very term name itself, being mediated. And we don't want something that does that. We want something that uh, we can just uh, treat as if it were indeed truly immediate, uh, rather than uh, what we did with immediacy, where uh, we mediate it against the immediate. <laughs> uh, so, Hegel says, we have a term that actually fits very well with uh, what we want to say, uh, and we call it being. You know, everything is. Uh, the very basic thing you can say about anything is that it is or that it is not. But nonetheless, it is, whether it is or is not. Uh, and uh, one says nothing else. Things are and that's it. So, okay. Pure immediacy being. And then, of course, we are working out logic, we're thinking about thinking, and uh, what do we do with a thought? We know we have the thought of immediacy, we have being, pure being, uh, and since obviously we're not going to mediate it, uh, Hegel gives us a, a rather a bit of a, <laughs> a an interesting runaround attempting to uh, trick us, uh, and uh, most of us fall for that trick very easily, uh, that um, we can actually conceive this as uh, really not mediated uh, at all. Uh, he says, uh, it's only equal to itself, but it's not unequal to another, therefore it has no reference to anything else. Uh, it is indeterminate, but it is not determined as indeterminate. So, you know, we can't say that it is indeterminate. Uh, you know, we just have to hold ourselves away from uh, saying anything determinate about it. That's its indeterminacy. So, right, immediacy. And, uh... Do the simple trick. I mean, really. Think the immediate. Think of that which has no relation. Think that which has nothing behind it to be penetrated into because it is simply the immediate. You know, think being as that immediacy. And, uh, you know, 
I'll give you a few seconds to try that for yourself. So as always, the uh, dog is with me, Balboa Jr. Just sniffing around. So right, try to think immediacy. And the answer is, you can't. Experientially, your mind just hangs there. You know, you try to think being, you're like, mm, I don't know. You can't think. You experience uh, the absence of thinking. There's nothing there. And the first time you read the logic, if uh, you're susceptible to this kind of reasoning, uh, it strikes you. There's nothing there. Bam. Uh, and that's how uh, you can make that first transition. Uh, there's nothing there. You know, there's no content within being. Uh, but those are external considerations, actually. Uh, they're, they're true, they work, but they're not how Hegel actually uh, moves along uh, in this consideration. Uh, rather, what happens is simply, well, you attempt to think being, and you can't. Uh, there is an absence of thinking. There is no thinking whatsoever. And you find that uh, that's precisely what is present. You know, that in being, in its immediacy, what is present is precisely this absent, this absence. Uh, the present thinking in an immediate thought is no thinking at all. Uh, therefore, our common intuition, just by the way, is usually that um, we don't consider the difference between thought and thinking. Uh, thought and thinking just seem to be... Uh, different things to us. Well, you can have a thought, but you, you know, you, you won't be, you, you can also not be thinking it. You know, you can just have it present. You can have it immediately. You know, you say, oh, well, I just have a thought in my mind. And, uh, but if somebody asks you, well, what, what is that thought in your mind? They're asking, well, what are you thinking? You know, what are you actively doing? Uh, and so what does an immediate thought do? Well, it has an immediate thinking, but an immediate thinking is precisely uh, no thinking at all. So that's uh, something rather interesting, isn't it? That uh, in an immediate thought, there is immediate thinking, but if you thought immediately, you wouldn't be thinking at all. Or rather, when you think immediately, you're not thinking at all. <laughs> you know, you say... Uh, say Balboa Jr. is. Uh, and in just saying that, have you thought anything? You know, it's like, he just is. Well, you know, somebody asks, well, what is he? And you're like, I don't know, he just is. Uh, you know, you, you make no determinations uh, other than there's something present. Uh, I don't know what, it's indeterminate, but it's present. That is the one single thing that's to be said. But anyways, in the nature of thought, that leads immediately to a cancellation and you're not thinking at all. So. Being is nothing because immediate thought is absent thinking. Now, there is no thinking at all. So you transition from thought to thinking. You realize that thinking isn't there and you say, well, you know, the truth of things is what they're revealed to be uh, in investigation. You know, you see a mirage in the desert. Uh, you know, you run towards it. Uh, you think it's uh, an oasis or something. And as you get close by, you know, it starts receding, starts dissipating, it disappears, and you realize the truth of the matter was that it was an illusion. You know, there was no oasis there. It was just uh, the vapor in the air, you know, causing an illusion. And this is how Hegel treats truth when he says, you know, the truth of things. Uh, that is, that the truth of being is nothing. That you thought something was present, but guess what? No, it wasn't. Uh, you know, in what is immediate, there is nothing at all. Uh, and therefore, the truth of being is nothing. The truth of immediate thought is no thinking at all. Some people coming up here. <laughs> come on, come here. Sorry, probably going to move uh, out of here a little bit. So truth of immediate thinking is no thinking. So we have a, a term name for that. That term name is nothing. Uh, nothing 
is not opposed to being. Nothing is uh, rather what being really is. Uh, it's not something different, it's just exactly what it always was. In immediate thought, you always just already have no thinking whatsoever. If what is present is absence, then that is the truth of being, and therefore nothing is the absolute truth. And uh, just uh, FYI, that's one of the considerations that Hegel constantly brings up, uh, and that is that uh, whenever we're thinking with uh, his logic, we're thinking in absolute terms. We're thinking of things not in relation to anything else, but in relation only to themselves and what is imminent. Get over here. All right, so you have nothing. And uh, the moment you step back and realize that there's nothing at all, that uh, in thinking immediacy there is no thinking, you immediately recollect the fact that there is no thinking. <laughs> that uh, you have thought about not thinking. That you couldn't think. Therefore, you immediately turn back to being, you know. Absence is, therefore, absence is being. Nothing is being. Uh, and that's the simple transition, really, between thought, thinking, and thought. You simply have that shift in which the immediately present is absent and the absent is at once immediately present. Get over here. Come on. Can you experience nothingness? No. Uh, and the reason why is there's a little trick and a uh, good question. There's a trick here. Uh, and people don't realize it, uh, and it took me actually a while uh, over this uh, last December to figure out what was the trick was, uh, because I knew there was a trick. Uh, Hegel kind of makes it clear that there is, uh, but it wasn't clear to me what that trick really was. And the trick is, uh, and it's not really a trick actually, it's just a matter of fact. The fact is that we are not immediate, uh, you know, uh, we the thinkers, uh, as well as the world, are not immediate, and we cannot be. If we were immediate, we would indeed be nothing at all. There would be nothing. Because immediacy is indeterminate, there is no difference. Uh, there couldn't be an opposition of anything. And if there is no opposition, there is no thinker, there is no thought. There is no subject, there is no object. There is no determination. That is the, uh, the same equivalent as exactly nothing. <laughs> uh, so can we experience nothing? No. Come on. Uh, even if you do, uh, something say like meditation, by the way. Uh, and I used to meditate for uh, for a while. And I, I, I find meditation very interesting. Uh, which is uh, that there are some meditators who think that you can get the thinker out of the thought. Or you can get uh, away from it. But the truth of the matter is that in all meditations, uh, unless you literally go unconscious... Uh, you don't experience nothingness, uh, and I mean in the same way. I mean, think about it analytically. Uh, analytics actually have this point, and it's it's an ancient point. I mean, this literally comes all the way from who ancient Greece, you know, where Protagoras was like, well, obviously, you know, nothing, nothing is not, and it's even actually it's even more more ancient than Protagoras. Than Protagoras. Uh, Parmenides and others uh, particularly go on about it, about like how it makes no sense to speak about nothing because it, precisely by the concept of nothing. It does not exist, so you cannot experience nothing, because to experience nothing is to not exist, and in non-existence there is no experience whatsoever. Uh, so even meditations, uh, when you're out of your mind, having you know, mystical experiences, uh, to say that you experience nothingness, or you experience the void, isn't really true. Uh, that doesn't really make any sense. It's logically incoherent and contradictory uh, in an abstract sense because it simply makes no sense. Uh, it's not uh, intelligible. So anyways, being a nothing, thought and thinking. Thought is present. It is. You think an immediate thought. There's nothing behind it. It's pure absence. No content. So it immediately is nothing. Stand back from that fact that you realize that there is nothing but now nothing is present to you, therefore it is being, boom. Being nothing, nothing being. Uh, 
and what it is becoming. You know, Hegel says, well, so this movement, uh, you know, it's not just simply a contradiction. Uh, it's not just simply empty cognition. Uh, something real is going on. Uh, you know, we thought immediacy properly. We didn't mess up. We didn't, come on. We didn't uh, misunderstand immediacy. You know, it's not that we misunderstood being when we thought being and realized there's nothing there. Or that when we thought nothing, we realized, well, nothing is there. Come on. Uh, apologies for the wind. Uh, the wind's picking up right now. Hitting a bit down the hill. Uh, and there's some people <laughs> around here. Usually this place is destitute. Come on. Which is why I come here, but... Uh, yeah, the one day I, I, I decided to do things, and people show up. It's kind of funny that one. Oh man, he's... He's seen another dog. Come on. Let's go. No. Come on. Hey. Apologies. Uh, where was I? So, alright, so we didn't misunderstand immediacy. Uh, can we think of that as a relation of the true infinite? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Actually, this whole being nothing, it's the part I'm trying to explain right now. So, you think immediacy. Uh, I mean, that's really what being and nothing really are. Uh, it's the thought of true immediacy. Uh, and the thought of true immediacy is precisely no thought at all. That's the truth. When you're thinking truly immediate, you're not thinking at all. Uh, therefore, being is nothing, nothing is being, is precisely the truth. And the infinite form of the reality of the immediate. Uh, the truth of being is this circle of being nothing, and the truth of nothing is this circle of nothing being. Uh, and Hegel's big point on that tends to be that since we haven't thought falsely, since we've actually cognized this properly, come on, get over here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, since we've thought about it properly, uh, we can't be like Kant and say, oh, for us, you know, reason has failed. You know, uh, we've uh, we've gone beyond the uh, uh, what is it? We've gone beyond the limits of reason. Uh, you know, we've uh, edged into the noumenal, and uh, we we aren't thinking properly anymore. Uh, but no, Hegel wouldn't say that. Hegel says, no, we thought the immediate properly. Uh, this is what the immediate really does. You know, this is the truth of being and nothing. Uh, it's, it's, it has produced a seeming contradiction, and this is the fact. It's a seeming contradiction. Um, it is a contradiction only if we stick with the understanding uh, that being and nothing are opposed. But that is a presupposition that we are unwarranted to make. Uh, that's a presupposition of, you know, standard philosoph philosophical uh, abstract definitions. But if you don't do that, and you just do the whole movement of immediate pure being, and immediate pure, pure nothing. Uh, that is what it is. Uh, and since that is what it is, and uh, I mean, here's a here's a little trick. So you know, somebody mentioned the infinite. So you know, the infinite movement is always something like this. This movement. And all of a sudden, I'm becoming popular. People are messaging. <laughs> God damn. Most times, uh, nobody messages me, but now everybody's messaging me. Great. Uh, anyways, so that infinite movement. You can uh, visualize it as a circle, or you can visualize it as this infinite, uh, regardless of which one you do. The fact that it's a closed circuit, the fact that you keep going back and forth imminently, is a tell for Hegel. That's a tell that you've got to, that is the true nature of this thought, that this circle of being is nothing, nothing is being, is precisely the real nature, the real thought. Um, being and nothing are not for themselves thoughts, they are actually appearances of one single thought and that thought is what Hegel then terms becoming that being and nothing are appearances of the real thought that underlies them the real thought that generates them and that is the concept of becoming and we call it becoming precisely because becoming is that concept which is obviously uh, the transition between being and nothing you know to and from each other And so, uh, when you actually think about that uh, in that manner, it makes perfect sense. Uh, and you know, some people are like, "Well, we don't know if uh, you know that's a valid move." And uh, 
I don't know under what, sure under regular logic I suppose uh, you maybe not, you maybe wouldn't understand it, it wouldn't make sense to you, but uh, it makes perfect sense if you just follow what Hegel's saying, that in thinking immediately you don't think at all, and that's the truth of the matter, uh, that in immediate presence nothing is present, and if nothing is present, well nothing is present, <laughs> nothing is. Uh, what else? Uh, what was becoming? Uh, with becoming, the determination then turns into, well, uh, is there something else to be said about it? Or are we just stuck with this whole being is nothing and that's becoming, that's the whole deal? Uh, not really. There's more to say about that. Uh, you can notice uh, directionality. We know that there is being to nothing and nothing to being. Uh, and we can actually recollect that. That's not a false recollection. That is not uh, an external reflection. Uh, some people have uh, argued that that is... Uh, an injection of temporality or, or uh, spatiality into the whole logic. Um, I don't think so. It has uh, really nothing to do with temporality. Uh, sure, we think temporally, uh, and we sometimes think spatially. Uh, but being and nothing as a movement uh, has nothing to do with that. Uh, you can think it both ways, and because you can think it both ways, uh, you can conceive that transition of movement from one to the other uh, in, inver in inversion. So, being to nothing, nothing to being. And Hegel says, okay, fine. Uh, so, becoming is. Uh, but becoming is this dual movement of being to nothing, nothing to being. Uh, and you'll say that being to nothing is ceasing to be. Nothing to being is coming to be. And, you know, that makes perfectly good sense. Okay, you know, we, we have not gone out of the resources of which, with which we begin with, with being in nothing. And, uh, we have only done one thing, which is, you should notice, we've recollected what we're doing. Uh, I mean, this is one of the truths about Hegel's and Hegelian logic, which is that what we're really doing is just following through on everything that we do. Uh, that the trick of transcendence is merely that what we do is always in excess to what we say, to what we make explicit. So, you know, in being and nothing, there is more than what we say. You know, the fact that we can do more than what is explicit. Uh, and that is becoming uh, on the level of being and nothing. With becoming, then we have the movement of ceasing to be and coming to be. Uh, and then that transition to the next chapter is uh, one of the weirdest transitions ever. Uh, there's something like four ways to comprehend that transition. Uh, and uh, I spent a couple, <laughs> spent about an hour to uh, this weekend explaining it to somebody who was asking me on Facebook, like, well, how does that make sense? What are you doing? I don't know why he likes eating grass. Here. I'm going to sit down here. Sorry about that. It's all right. Uh, ceasing to be, coming to be. And Hegel makes uh, a couple things uh, interesting. One is, okay, first form of transition. If becoming is becoming, what does it become? Uh, think about that. You know, why do we return back to being a nothing after becoming? Uh, if becoming is becoming, uh, it doesn't make sense that becoming just becomes becoming. Uh, it, it uh, contradicts the whole purpose of becoming. You know, Hegel says becoming is a vanishing. Uh, but if all we have is vanishing, <coughs> oh my God! Quit being a bad boy. He acts all tough, but <laughs> he's all bark, no bite. Get over here. Sorry about that. Get over there. Sorry. So if becoming is becoming, uh, if it's vanishing, it doesn't make sense if the vanishing doesn't vanish. Because think about this contradiction. If vanishing does not vanish, then it's not vanishing. <laughs> if becoming does not become something else, then it's not becoming. You know, if we're stuck in this infinite vanishing, then that vanishing does not 
vanish. Therefore, it is being, and we're back to being a nothing. So that's one sense of transition in which we get back to being a nothing, and then we get to existence, uh, determinate being. Another sense of the transition is uh, if we have ceasing to be and coming to be, Sorry, uh, looking at the comments here. Uh, I'm gonna ignore you, Lazul. Uh, you're asking uh, stuff that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so where was I? Oh my god. So it ceases to be coming to be. It ceases to be coming to be. If those are the products of becoming, think about what becoming does. You know, if wherever you start. You know, if you have to start with ceasing to be, you're going from being to nothing. And Hegel says, well, what happens immediately with becoming anyways? You know, because you're immediately bounced back and forth between being and nothing, being and nothing, being and nothing, immediately. <laughs> Quit being a bad boy, holy shit. Sorry about that. It's an annoying day. I mean, it's a beautiful day, but uh, I suppose everybody thought it was a beautiful day and decided to come to local hill. Um, sorry, somebody said. Uh, so can we see becoming as a time-space-free future being, which in returns also nothing? Um, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Uh, somebody else says. Uh, Becoming re the, I assume you're talking about what Hegel says about being a nothing, where it requires intentionality. Uh, Hegel says that yes, uh, but I think there's a bit of misunderstanding there because uh, the movement is not about intentionality. Uh, our comprehension of what we want to say is intentional. Uh, the thing is that imminently it actually isn't. Uh, and I was saying this earlier, and uh, I suppose I should explain it. That the reason we can intend, that the reason we can intend being and nothing is different is because we're operative at a higher level than the basic beginning of the science of logic. Uh, the basic beginning of the science of logic is immediate. We are not immediate. Uh, we are immediate. Uh, and therefore, actually, the, the trick uh, of the intentionality is that we intend by nothing non existence, but we intend by being existence. Uh, so there is the intentionality of that. But that intentionality is actually not required uh, because we can intend it in an unbelievable amount of ways. Uh, pretty much, actually, all the ways in which. Huh? <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so, the intentionality uh, we can intend it as forming content, we can intend it as uh, determinacy and indeterminacy. I think the most basic one is precisely that one, determinacy and indeterminacy, where uh, determinacy is also the equivalent of basic existence, so we mean by that being. Laz quit doing the CIA's job. Fuck. Uh, people ask me about where I am. Yeah, yeah, do some investigations. How about that? I'm not going to tell you. Well, yeah, Laz, I mean, dude, you're like, you gotta protect yourself from being, uh, <laughs> doxxed. And here you are, doxing me, you fucker. Uh, okay, I'm gonna ignore that, uh, sorry. So the intentionality thing, yes, it's there, but it's not necessary. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's there, but it's not necessary. It's not logically necessary. Uh, the real movement is to do with uh, thinking and thought. Uh, and um, you don't have to intend it. You just do it, actually. Um, I have a blog where uh, I recently did on that, uh, where I explained that, that um, 
we do it. I mean, it really has to do with what we just naturally do with thought and thinking, uh, why we can do the whole being and nothing movement uh, without even intending it. Uh, we don't have to consciously intend it, uh, we just do it. So anyways, where was I? Okay, back to becoming, you know, uh, with all your uh, distracting comments. So we have ceasing to be, okay. Okay, that was, YouTube uh, fell through, but uh, good thing it's, uh, it let me reconnect. Uh, so, ceasing to be, coming to be. Ceasing to be is uh, being to nothing, coming to be is nothing to being. Uh, and my point about that was, okay, Hegel says that the, transition, that the transition between being and nothing is immediate. You know, you go being, nothing, boom, back to being. That's what happens with ceasing to be and coming to be. You know, so if you cease to be, which is being to nothing, you are immediately thrown back to being. <laughs> yeah, the Illuminati. Uh, and so the same thing uh, happens with uh, coming to be, that the moment you go from nothing to being, you're immediately thrown back to nothing. And Hegel says, well, you know, assume that, well, actually not, Hegel doesn't say this, but like, I mean, uh, to give you an image, I mean, you ever seen like those things uh, where it has, uh, oh God, I, I can't do it right now because I would have to use both hands. You see the little thing where you have like the string and the little circle thing in the middle and you hold it with both hands and it flips back and forth between a bird and a cage and you flip it fast enough you see both the bird and the cage becoming is basically like that uh except you know there's no temporality you just immediately have both the bird and the cage and uh, you have being in nothing Uh, so that's one method of transition between uh, becoming to existence in which where uh, ceasing to be and coming to be basically show up as frozen. That uh, wherever you begin is where you're back to immediately because of the way that the transition is immediate. Uh, so if you have being and nothing in opposition, uh, they are immediately stuck uh, in their own relations. Uh, behind them is the other, but uh, you don't see it and you don't have to see it. Uh, so that's a second transition, and uh, I don't think it's the one that actually um, works perfect. Why the fuck is everybody messaging me right now? Fuck. <laughs> Josh, tell them to quit messaging me on Twitter. Uh, where was I? Okay, so that's a second trans transition. First transition, logical, which is the contradiction of if vanishing doesn't vanish, then... Uh, yeah, I have an Instagram. Just follow me at uh, seawolf underscore aw. Uh, sea as in, you know, the sea, the ocean. Wolf as in, well, you know, fucking wolf. Uh, and yeah. Seawolf underscore aw. Or look up on my Twitter. Uh, I have uh, things posted. So, okay. I'll have to uh, be more more careful next time with the live streaming. Uh, you guys are so... Uh, you distract me a lot. Uh, becoming is Nietzsche's eternal return? Maybe. Uh, I don't know very much about Nietzsche's uh, philosophy, honestly. Uh, I tried reading uh, Twilight of the Idols. wasn't really a, a fan. Uh, Lazul has it. Just, just link it, Lazul. It's okay. Uh. Anyways, so one first transition to becoming the contradiction that if vanishing doesn't vanish, then it is, and we're back to being nothing. Second transition, which is the frozen vision of cease to be and coming to be, that. Once you immediately go from cease to be to coming to be, you're back again. That's just nature becoming. Uh, third transition. Uh, this Hegel doesn't mention, 
but uh, it functionally works, which is this infinite transition, this infinite movement, where being and nothing appear and they occur. Will you stop being a bad boy? Come on. That infinite movement, these two sides, being and nothing. That infinite movement then is, and that's it. That's the transition. That the infinite movement is, and therefore you have determined. Uh, and then the fourth version is the uh, more linguistic vanishing of the vanishing, which where if the vanishing vanishes, well, it vanishes into something which is being nothing. Uh, all right. So yeah, that's that's some bit about being nothing and becoming. Uh, and if you have questions, uh, ask them in the comments. Uh, or if you have questions right now, ask them in the, the chat. Uh, I can answer anything related to that. Uh, the Parmenides problem. What is the, the Parmenides problem? Uh, how do you... If you can expand on that, uh, maybe I can comment on that further. I like I like Parmenides, by the way. I mean, if uh, you read the uh, the poem on nature, it's pretty damn good. Uh, it's really good. So, any questions at all? If not, I will. Uh, Chainmail says, I want to talk about numerology and existence and self-realization. Uh, well, if you don't know about 19.5, we can't talk numerology, buddy. <laughs> Look at these hills. This is awesome. You know, uh, I see might move away from here pretty soon. Now I'm going to miss these hills. Uh, they're really beautiful. Where are you going? Hey Cactus, long time no see. Alright, so to cut this... <laughs> uh, to cut this short so uh, you know it doesn't turn into just a, a ramble. Uh, all right, I'll do a stream immediately right after here just for a general chat. Uh, so uh, catch me there. Uh, so 